Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to set up your very own mining rig. Now, this is a question I've been asked a lot before in the past. And it can be very confusing, especially for somebody who isn't very tech savvy and hasn't worked uh, a lot with computers in the past. So in this video, I'm just going to go over all the parts you need and essentially things you should avoid. I hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys, the first component we're going to be looking at is the motherboard. This is probably the most important component you're going to be purchasing. Aside from the graphics cards, of course. You can cheap out in just about everything else. But if there are three components you definitely don't want to cheap out on, it's the power supply, our motherboard, and our graphics cards. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail as to why. Our motherboards kind of dictate uh, several things, uh, including how many graphics cards you're gonna be able to run per board. The most important thing you wanna look for when purchasing a motherboard is the amount of PCI Express lanes it has, or slots, I should say. These guys right here, this particular board I'm showing you guys is a Gigabyte GA. Z97X and it comes with six PCIe uh, slots one, two, three of the smaller 1x slots and three of the larger 4, 8, and 16x slots. You want to be very careful when purchasing a board. I know a lot of newer guys don't know the difference between PCI and PCI Express, it can be very confusing, they look very similar but they are completely different. A modern graphics card runs on PCI Express. It will not work with PCI. You will probably ruin your board if you try to plug it into the PCI uh, slot. So just keep that into account. Another thing you should really look for is the chipset you're gonna be running. You don't wanna go too old in the chipset because the boards start to become pricier since there's less floating around and you don't want to go too new at the same time because things are really expensive you run into other things like DDR4 RAM which is pretty pricey and it's completely unnecessary so you have to ask yourself whether A you want to buy used or new B the amount of cards you want to run per board now I'm going to be talking a little bit about the other components like the RAM and the processor. Um, you want to cheap out as much as you can in both RAM and processor. I know it sounds kind of wrong, but that's the way it is. Your processor will remain at idle the entire time you're mining. It's just going to sit there and keep the OS running. That's practically its job. Keep the batch file running and keep the OS running, which isn't very stressful at all. You can completely cheap out on your CPU cooler and the processor itself. You're not going to use a whole lot of CPU processing power. Same thing with the RAM. You don't need any, you don't need to buy a fancy uh, stick of RAM with a uh, heatsink and all that stuff. You can completely cheap out on the RAM also as long as it has enough capacity to boot the OS, you're good to go. I would give yourself uh, around a gigabyte or so of headway, headroom. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. You don't need to buy something, something like this that's gonna cost you like $50. No, you can buy a little Samsung stick and it works exactly the same. You're going to you're going to see absolutely no difference between something like this versus something like that. Another thing you guys want to keep into account also, I forgot to mention this on the RAM. If you're going to be running 8 gigs of RAM as an example, buy a single 8 gig module. You guys have to remember it's all about efficiency and power saving. If you have four 2 gig modules you gotta power those four individual modules to get the 8 gigs and that's that's just a lot of wasted electricity right there 
It's better to use a single component in just about everything. Um, you don't want to have multiple hard drives running on the system. You don't want to have multiple RAM, uh, RAM DIMMs running on the system. Preferably, you don't want to have multiple power supplies running on the system as well. Now, graphics card sets is different because that's the main component that does the workload. But for the most part, you want to go as minimalistic as you can. All right, I'm going to briefly go over the PCIe 1X to 16X risers. These guys right here essentially convert your 16X slot into a smaller 1x configuration because obviously you're not going to fit this big old slot into that small 1x slot I showed you in the motherboard um, our graphics cards receive power um, from two different locations the power cables up here and the PCI slot on here PCIe slot um, that's kind of problematic though for the PCI Express slot since this thing's not going to be plugged directly into the motherboard and that is why these risers down here come with power cables both in Molex and in SATA configurations now you just you want to be careful when purchasing a power supply and a riser because modern power supplies tend to have SATA connectors for the most part so odds are if you have an older power supply you're gonna be using Molex like this if you're running something newer you're gonna have SATA so when you purchase one of these guys just make sure to double check that you have the proper connection if not you can always buy little adapters like this that will convert from Molex to SATA and vice versa I'll show you guys how to connect this it's pretty self explanatory it has a little clip down here you open this up clip it on close the latch And then you insert your USB cable and that's about all there is to it and now you can just have the graphics card sit wherever you want they come they're pretty pretty darn useful these little platforms I love these guys um, I did buy some of these and they're kind of hard to use they're sideways and the graphics card sits kind of awkward but they do work and I'm sure they're useful for certain scenarios, but I personally prefer the platform style. As far as the hard drive is concerned, you don't need a large capacity drive by any means. Um, as long as you can install the operating system, which will require a certain amount of gigabyte depending on the OS you plan on running, um, you can just give yourself like another 30 gigs of extra space to download your batch files and other essential applications you need. Um, that's about it though as far as the hard drive. There's not a whole lot to it. Just make sure the connectors, you have the proper connectors for your power supply and whatnot. Um, SSDs and hard drives there's no difference at all whatsoever if you're gonna be mining with graphics cards the type of hard drive isn't gonna be a factor at all you can completely cheap out just get a 64 gig and you'll be fine but yeah it's about it for the hard drive alright guys as far as the power supply is concerned you definitely do not want to cheap out on this uh, the power supply in the long run is gonna save you a lot of money depending on its efficiency and you definitely don't want to run into the risk of blowing it up because I've personally actually blown up one of these guys before uh, this particular guy right here is a cheapo eBay 
power supply. I think I bought this guy for around like $35, which is extremely cheap for a 850 watt rated power supply. So definitely do not cheap out on these guys. The 850 watt power supply I was running from eBay. I was only pushing around 400 watts through it for around 27 days of mining nonstop and randomly in the middle of the night it just boom exploded I heard a loud boom and this little guy was on fire and everything and I my wife was freaking out and whatnot so definitely do not chip on the power supply at all make sure the capacity is at least 20% over the wattage you're gonna be pulling. So say your miner is gonna draw around a thousand watts of electricity. You wanna have a power supply that's rated at a thousand two hundred watts, just giving you that 20% extra headroom. Another reason why you don't want to buy one of these is because all cheapo power supplies will only come with a couple of these graphics cards connectors. This particular guy only has two. Wow. That's really, really bad. It has a bunch of the Molex collectors, connectors I was telling you guys about before. Only two power connectors for your graphics cards, which is virtually useless. You can only run like one high current uh, drawing graphics card or two smaller cards, two more efficient cards. Just don't buy a power supply like this. You want to buy a, a well-known brand that's had reviews in the past. There's a lot of reviews you can look up on Tom's hardware. There's a lot of info out there on them. Just make sure your power supply has the right connectors. Your risers will either use Molex or SATA like I mentioned before. Or if, um, I mean, you can always buy the adapters too online, but just to save you some money, make sure you buy a power supply that has the proper connectors. Older models will have Molex. Most of the newer stuff only comes with SATA. Maybe one or two of these Molex guys. But yeah, that's about it. Don't, don't chip out on your power supply. Give yourself some headroom. Your power supply should only be running at around 80% load you don't want to push it too far all right guys the graphics cards this is where you should put the vast majority of your research time on as of today the best bang for your buck would be rx 480s which is what i'm currently running in my miners they are going to run you around anywhere from 180 to 200 dollars or so for the four gigabyte uh models you're going to be paying an extra 15 20 25 dollars for the 8 gig model. Those are by far the most efficient and produce the highest hash rate of all the AMD cards out there. Older R9 280s like this guy right here will hash around the same uh, hash rate a RX 480 will hash, but this guy will consume a lot more power doing so. But this guy will run you a hundred dollars less than a RX 480 would. So there's a lot of factors involved. You just have to do your research, do a little math in order to see what's the best route you should take. I did benchmark 10 AMD graphics cards not too long ago. I'll post the link in the description below. That way you guys have like a starting point of what's good and what's not in terms of efficiency for the graphics cards. Alright guys, I'm going to give you a, an example of my personal miner. Uh, a lot of you that have been watching my YouTube channel for a while have probably seen this box miner being modified several times now. I'm just going to quickly go over how everything should be connected. So like I showed you guys earlier, we have our riser platforms up there. Our graphics cards installed on the risers. And then we have, oops, we have our power cable right here. 
going down to our SATA connector from the power supply. This is all one big strand of SATA connectors and there's our hard drive over there. Connected by SATA, another SATA connector there. SATA connector here. SATA connector there. And it's just one big strand of SATA connectors powering all the risers. And then we have our communication cables right here. Our USB PCI COM cables going down to the motherboard down there. All six of them. This is the exact same board I showed you guys, just in orange. We have our single stick of RAM back there, up here. A cheap uh, Intel CPU cooler because our processor is going to be at idle 24 7. You don't really need a lot of cooling power. We have our Ethernet cable right there to uh, get internet access to submit the shares and uh, up here we have our power plugs all six of them coming from our power supply this particular power supply is a 1200 watt power supply and this is not a cheap uh, bootleg model so it comes with a lot of these power cables right here as a matter of fact I have a bunch of extra ones just laying around but yeah that's about it guys oh here you guys can see the watts it's pulling over on a thousand I'm giving it 200 watts of headroom on the power supply I kinda did the math beforehand Yep, there it goes.